In this lesson, we're gonna round out our diary entry functionality by having the ability for you to click into a diary entry to view more details for that diary entry, as well as for you to be able to edit a diary entry. Now, just like in the last video, I do challenge you to build this functionality without watching this video first. The video will be here if you get stuck, but building this doesn't require that we learn any new concepts. New concepts are gonna come after this lesson, but we need to build these views out first so we have a foundation for some of the more advanced functionality that we're gonna build. So, try and have a go at this yourself first, otherwise, let's go through it together now. Now, our first job here is to create the view that the user sees when they click on one of these diary entries, which shows the full details for that diary entry, including, of course, the content. So if I can, I always like to just steal parts of my application that I've already built. That obviously is gonna save us some time, but also keeps our design consistent. So on our trip details view, I've got this group here, which has a date value, as well as a paragraph of text. And that's pretty much the same look that we're gonna go for on our diary entry details view as well. So all I'm gonna do is just copy this and then I'm going to go and create a new view. I'll create here a new mobile view, and this will be our diary entry details. And we'll keep it as a scrollable view. And then I'm literally just gonna paste in here that content group. And then first things first, this diary entries view needs to hold on to a diary entry in order to have something to display within these dynamic text values. So we're gonna add a new property. This is exactly the same thing as we did when we set up our trip details view. Remember on our trip details view, we've got this trip property. Well, now we're setting up our diary entry details view. So of course we need a property here for our diary entry. And this like before is gonna be a dynamic value. And what is it gonna be? Of course, a diary entry. Now we don't want it to be optional. It makes no sense to show a diary entry details view when there is no diary entry to show the details for. So we're not gonna make it optional. We're gonna be forced to add a diary entry anytime that we display this view. And then what I'm also gonna do is set up a top app bar. And for this one, I think I'm gonna keep the title style on iOS as center rather than large. And if I show you our reference app here, what we're trying to build, you'll see that large works okay when the title is relatively short. But if we go and look at, for example, this midnight aperitivo, well, it gets cut off there. So it's not that well set up for larger titles. So for that reason, I'm gonna keep it here as centered. And the title, if I go and right click and clear this out, I'm gonna change the dynamic data source to be the diary entry that lives inside of that property that we just created. So we're gonna show here the title value. And then for these values, accordingly, we're going to set these up. If I go and right click and clear out this broken expression because we copied this from the trip details view. Everything in this expression was expecting a trip details data source. So what we're gonna do instead is set this to be the diary entry details as date, and we'll format that again as we've been doing thus far in the course. Same thing for the text that's gonna hold the diary entry content. So we'll replace that with the diary entries content. And I can see here that I've got a whole bunch of other issues here. And these are related to other elements that we copied that were brought along for the ride. A lot of these can actually be removed as we delete the elements that we don't need. So group cost we don't need because a diary entry itself doesn't have a cost. And you can see here that that took away all of those issues as well. So that was an easy fix. And then what we can do is we can just set up the logic to display this view right away and see how it looks. So from the trip details, we've got our list of diary entries, a vertical list item. I can even call this diary entry to be super specific. And we can add a workflow when this is tapped, which is gonna load up the corresponding diary entry view. So we're gonna go navigation, 
go to view. We are going to open this in a stack because this isn't a contextual view that's relevant for trip details. We don't really want to overlay trip details. A diary entry is something that is relatively self-contained and we can show as a standalone view. And we're going to set the target view here to be, of course, that diary entry details. We're going to be forced to add a diary entry, which makes sense because we didn't make the property optional. And of course, what we're going to set this to is the current items diary entry. That is the diary entry in the particular row that's being clicked in this list of diary entries. And so what this means is if I open my family trip to Spain and I click, for example, this bottom one, you can see that it appears and it looks relatively tidy. And then also while we're here, just so we can test this, this is a habit that you may want to get into, is just deleting out some of the entries that are blank and aren't really going to help you with testing. And then what I also like to do is just use something like ChatGPT to just generate some sample data for me. So this is just an example diary entry, for example. And then I can just paste in that content when I'm testing out the app to just give me some content to test the appearance of my interface with. And so I think that looks pretty good. Now I think we wanna have an edit button over in the top right corner here that's gonna let us edit a diary entry. So to do that, I'm gonna add a trailing button and I'm just gonna make this as we've done before, a little pencil icon. I'll set it to be black. And all I want to happen when this icon is clicked is that we go to our diary entry, create an edit form. And I want us to do this in a modal. And of course this will work nicely, but we need to configure this diary entry form to handle editing a diary entry, not just for creating a diary entry. So this is gonna be exactly the same approach that we use when editing a trip. So the first thing for us to do on our create and edit diary entry view is to add a new property, which is going to allow us to pass in the diary entry, which we want to edit. So this is going to be a diary entry type of thing. And of course it should be optional because we don't want to pass this in when we are creating a new diary entry. And this is what's going to let us use this form in both create mode and edit mode, because of course, just as we did for the edit trip view, we can do things like check if the diary entry property exists or not. So we can see if it's empty and depending on what it is, we can add some conditional display properties, some conditional user interface. So when it is empty, for example, we'll say create entry. And when it's not, we will say edit entry. And the same thing for our button over here, right? I can, instead of actually just writing this whole expression again, as a shortcut, I can just right click on an existing expression and then on my trailing button here, which I had to select there in the elements tree because I couldn't see it anymore in the app bar now that I'd taken away the label. I can just right click into this box and hit paste expression. And that's at least gonna give me a starting point. So for this, we'll say something like create or save changes. And then as before for our trip details view, we should set some initial content for when we are editing a diary entry. So I'm gonna set this to be extracting from the diary entry that's gonna be passed in via that property, that view property, the title field. And then I'm gonna use my little shortcut here of copying this expression and just using this as a starting point for my date time picker. But you see here for my date time picker, I already have some initial content set to be the current date time. And this is what I want to appear when I'm creating a new diary entry. It's just that when I'm editing an existing diary entry, I don't want this to be my initial content. I want the initial content to be whatever the existing value for the date field is. So we just use a conditional statement for that. We would just add a condition, the same one as before. We're checking to see whether there is a diary entry or not existing in that property. And that is a proxy or 
an indicator for whether the user is editing or creating a new diary entry. So in this case, it's when it's not empty, then I want the initial content to be something different. And that's where I want it actually to be the diary entries date field. And then for the summary, while well, this one is pretty straightforward, just as before the initial content is going to be the content field. We may also want to add some kind of limit on the number of characters for a diary entry so that users can't go absolutely ballistic with the amount of things that they store in our application. I'll usually just use one of the many character counters that you can find by just Googling character counter and just seeing how many characters are in a sample piece of text. I'd probably be comfortable with a lot more than this, to be honest. I could probably do, you know, I wanna let my users add in maybe four or five times that initial amount. This is probably absolutely fine, maybe even slightly more. And so I can see, okay, that's, I'm gonna round that to about seven and a half thousand characters. So that's then the value that I will put into here. And then finally, we need to add some logic for saving the diary entry, not just creating it. So just the same as on our create and edit trip logic, if you recall, we've got a button here, which is depending on whether the user is creating or editing a new trip, it's gonna fire either this action or this action. And as before, the thing that we're looking to as a reference, as an anchor to decide what to do is whether or not the trip in that trip property is present or not. So back on our diary entry form here, let's add a condition on the create action here, which is going to restrict this action from firing only when there is no diary entry in that property. And then we'll add another action here, which is going to make changes to the existing diary entry stored in that property. And I'll just hit add all fields here as a little shortcut and just set these to be the corresponding input values. The only one that we aren't gonna change here is the trip. We don't have support for allowing users to reassign diary entries between trips. That might be some kind of advanced feature that we could add if our users were asking for it. But for now, a diary entry belongs to the trip that it was created for and they cannot change it after that point. So we've got our make changes action. We just now need to add the inverse of the action that we added on the create a new diary entry step. So I'm gonna copy this expression and then on my make changes action, I'm actually just gonna right click and paste it in. That's just gonna give me a nice little shortcut and a starting point because now all I have to do is just change this last part of the expression to is not empty. And I now have two inverse conditions on their respective actions. So only one of them will fire. And if I go to test this out now, you'll see that it's broken. I'm not seeing the title for this entry. I'm not seeing the summary and I'm not seeing save changes or anything that indicates that we're in edit mode. And since we've set all of this up just now, that suggests to me that we aren't populating this diary entry property. So where we are actually showing this view is of course from diary entry details upon this edit icon being clicked. And if I trigger that, you'll see that we are showing the view, but we're not passing in the corresponding diary entry. So that is our problem here. So I'm going to grab the diary entry that's already being stored in this view, in this diary entry details view, inside of, of course, that diary entry property. And if I now try to hit that edit icon, then everything seems to be working appropriately. In fact, now that I see the design, I don't actually think we need edit entry in the middle here. So I'm going to actually amend the title value here in my app bar within the formatted as text expression. I'm just going to remove the edit entry. So if we're in edit mode, there's actually gonna be nothing here within that title value. And yeah, I think that looks a lot better. So I can test this by just making some superficial changes 
to all of these properties and hit in save changes and you can see that all of those changes have been applied. Awesome, so we've got this concept of a diary entry now in our application and we've also got this trip data type. So we've got these two data types that are working together to create this interesting and unique user experience. What we're gonna do over the next few videos is start to dive deeper into some of the other ways that we can work with data in our application. And the end result is gonna allow us to categorize our trips based on some app-wide trip types as well as adding some basic filtering to our trips page. So we're gonna learn all this and more over the next few lessons.